Good evening, students. In this group, we're going to be going over um, five questions and some of the AP calculus release exams for uh, calculus AB and BC. We're just, I'm just going to be focusing mainly on limits. Okay, so I went through um, a whole bunch of review questions and then extracted um, the limit questions from the um, release exams. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at uh, the first um, question, question number one. So for question one, it says, what is the limit as h approaches zero of a times one half plus h to the eighth minus a times one half to the eighth over h? Uh, this um, was a uh, AB question uh, for 1969 on the 1969 AP exam. All right, so let's take a look at this question. If you look at this limit expression, this is um, the limit expression for a derivative of a function at a specific x value. So what is the x value here that we're looking at? Well, if you take a look at this argument of this exponent right here, this is the x value, and, and this piece right here is the x value, okay? Now, how do I know that this is x and this is x? Well, let's write down the limit definition of a derivative. We know that f prime of x is the limit as h approaches 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x over h, okay? So that's exactly what this is. So you always want to ask yourself, what is being added to h? That's an easy way to identify. Whatever is being added to h is normally the um, argument of the second um, component of the term in the numerator, and that's what x normally is, okay? So let's translate this into a derivative problem, because if you want to do this algebraically, it will take us forever to um, work out what the expansion of this term is. So um, this is another way of, of saying you want to find the derivative f prime of 1 half, where, um, where the function f of x equals 8x to the 8 power. Okay, all I did to generate this function is, you notice how this last thing was f of x, and since x is 1 half, I replaced the 1 half with the x, so it became um, 8 uh, x to the 8th power. All right, so what we're doing is evaluating the derivative of this function when x is 1 half. All right, so let's go ahead and do it. So what we'll do first is find the derivative of this function for any x value, and then we'll set it to x equals 1 half, okay? So with this function in mind, f prime of x is equal to, using the power rule, 64x to the 7th power. Now, f prime of 1 half equals 64 times 1 half to the 7th power. Okay? If we want to express uh, 64 as a, um, as a power of 2, we can express it as 2 to the 6th power. And then we'll use the uh, properties of exponents to expand this. This would be times 1 over 2 to the 7th. And then we have 2 to the 6th over 2 to the 7th, which equals 2 um, to the... Oh, well, we can just do it, let's do it this way. We can just subtract the smaller exponent from the bigger one, right? Um, if we do that, we're going to have 1 over 2 to the first power. All right, so just subtract 6 from 7, and you have 1 half. All right, we can clearly see that our answer is option letter B. Okay, let's uh, move on to the next question. Question two, this was taken from the um, AB uh, 1973 exam. Okay, so let's take a look at this. This is similar to what we discussed earlier, um, which is the derivative of a function using the limit definition, um, as we mentioned here, but it doesn't match the format that we talked about exactly. So the question is, can we use some properties of logarithm perhaps to express this in a fashion that's consistent with the definition of a derivative using the limit? And the answer is absolutely. You remember the quotient property of um, the, uh, I'm sorry, the, the uh, difference property of logarithm. So if you have x, the natural logarithm of x over y is the same thing as the natural logarithm of x minus the natural logarithm of y. So we can ap apply this um, property to this situation here and express this limit as the limit as h approaches 0 
of the natural logarithm of 2 plus h, which is the numerator minus the denominator, which is the natural logarithm of 2, this entire expression divided by um, divided by h. Okay, so all I just did is I multiplied in this one over h into the whole expression. Okay, so this is the derivative of a function. Can you tell what the function is? Well, what is x? Remember we talked about it earlier. This is x, or whatever you add into h is basically what x is. So this is another way of saying find f prime of 2 where the function f of x is the natural logarithm of what? Well, we'll take out the 2 for now and just evaluate it at x, the natural logarithm of x, okay? All right, so how do we do this? We'll find the derivative first and then evaluate the derivative when x equals 2. All right, so f prime of x <coughs> is uh, 1 over x, all right? And then uh, f prime of 2 is 1 half. And your final answer is option C. So there you have it. All right, let's move on to the next question. Um, this question was taken from the um, uh, same, same year, AB 1973. And then this has to do with the understanding of the whole idea of continuity of a function and also the cases where a derivative exists. So, um, it says if f is continuous with a continuous function on a, b, which of the following is necessarily true? All right, so uh, if we take a look at the question, it's easier for us to determine what the answer is. Um, what does it mean if a function is continuous at a point, at every point in an interval? That means for basically for any x, let's say any x sub 0 in that interval, um, the left and the right hand limits, which is represented by the limit as x approaches x of 0, uh, of the function is basically going to be equal to f of x of 0, whatever that function is. Okay? And another way of writing, writing this is uh, f times the limit um, as x, as x approaches x of 0 of x. Okay, this is just a, another way of writing it. Here, let me write it nicer. All right, so that's basically means the same thing. All right, so you can clearly see that option C is the answer here because this is a continuous function on every point. That means that the left and right hand limits are going to be the same and they're going to be equal to what the value of the function is at that particular point. So let's prove that the other ones are not necessarily true. So f prime of... Uh, F prime exists on AB. Well, a continuous function could have a cusp in AB. Let's see how AB have a cusp like this, and that's A, and that's B. So the fact that a function is continuous doesn't imply differentiability, okay? So continuity does not imply differentiability. So we cannot make any conclusions as to the existence or the value um, or even the behavior of F, F, F prime, okay? It says F of X of 0 is a maximum of F if F of x sub 0 is a maximum of f, then f prime of x sub 0 equals uh, 0. This is again assuming that um, the every point in this interval a, b is differentiable, which we do not know. What if, if the maximum occurs at a peak, right, at a corner, for example? So this is a and b, and this, you have a corner at, this is x sub 0 right here. Even though that's the maximum, the derivative doesn't exist at that point because you have a corner there. Like I said earlier, continuity doesn't tell you too much about um, the, the derivative, okay? And then this says f prime um, of x equals 0 for some x uh, in a, b. That's not true. Um, uh, so this, this is not also the case because the point where you have the derivative equal to 0 is assuming that the entire function is the function is differentiable in this entire interval, and that's not um, always the case. So we see that this cannot be the case. It cannot be B. It cannot be A also. And next, it says the graph of f prime is a straight line. Now, is, does that make any sense? So the graph of f prime is a straight line. 
that means that this function is differentiable on this entire interval. That's why f prime is a straight line. Okay. So this also is assuming that the function is differentiable on that entire interval. And you cannot make that assumption simply dealing with continuity. Continuity doesn't tell you too much about the sign or behavior or even the existence um, of f prime um, on, that, on that interval. All right. So we can clearly see that uh, the conclusion we can draw. When you're talking about continuities, the limits, the left and right hand limits, and not equaling the value of the function at any point um, in that interval. So you can see the answer is uh, option C. All right, let's take a look at um, question question number four. Uh, this is a limit um, involving infinity problem, and uh, this was taken from the uh, AV exam of 1985. Okay, so AB 1985. All right, so um, what's the limit here? As n approaches zero, infinity of 4n squared over n squared plus 10,000n. Well, when you're looking at limits involving infinity, you want to look at the weights, right? Um, which term is the quickest going term in the numerator and the denominator, which are the leading terms? In the numerator, this is the only term, so by default, it's going to be the term we'll consider. And in the denominator, the term with the highest degree is going to be the leading term or the term that goes quickest as you head towards infinity. So that will be n squared. That will meet the, the, the requirement. All right. So this limit is going to basically become the limit as n approaches infinity of 4n squared over n squared. Okay. We notice we have an equal weight situation here. And whenever you have equal weights, you can just simply divide the leading terms, and that gives you the answer. As you can see here, if we divide n square and n square, we have a constant function. And this limit is simply going to be 4. And there goes your final answer, option D. All right, let's take a look at the last question in this installment, um, problem number 5. And this is the same, the same, um, the same year, AB85, um, release question. So it says if fx is equal to e to the x, which of the following is equal to f prime of x? This is another um, uh, assessment of our ability to express the derivative using the limits definition of a derivative. Okay, so let's rewrite what it is. Again, before we start using it, f prime of x equals the limit as h approaches 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x divided by h. Okay, so let's use this um, formula of, a, of the derivative to uh, to um, evaluate the derivative of e to the x at, at e. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is um, write down the general definition of the derivative of this function at any x value, and then we're going to fix it at x equals e. Okay, so f prime of x for this function is going to be the limit as h approaches 0. Of f of x plus h means that anyway you see x you replace it with x plus h. You basically compose this function with x plus h. Okay, so it's going to be e to the x plus h minus f of x is the original function, e to the x over h. Okay, are we done? Absolutely not. We are asked to evaluate it at e. So what that simply means is we're going to substitute e for all the x's in this limit expression. So f prime of e is going to be the limit as h approaches 0 of e to the, instead of x plus h, will be e to the e plus h this time because we're replacing all the x's with e minus, instead of e to the x, will be e to the e uh, divided by h. And there goes your final answer. So you can see that our answer is option letter e. So thanks so much for taking the time to watch this presentation. You can feel free to subscribe to my channel or comment. Let me know what you think about this presentation. Like or share. And um, it's advisable to subscribe because I'm going to be coming out with uh, the next installment of this uh, review series on limits very soon. Um, more clips can be found on Thanks again for watching and have a wonderful day.